Hello and welcome to the video. My name's Alex. I'm a mum of a one-year-old son. So a friend of mine, a good friend of mine who's just had a baby actually asked me this question yesterday. We're coming into winter in Australia and she was just wondering what we dressed Jed in for winter. Um, she actually lives overseas and I thought that the easiest way to explain how we dressed Jed for winter would be to do a video and a little show and tell. So hopefully this is helpful to my friend and also anyone else who watches. Just to give you a little bit of background information, we live in Sydney and the weather here in well, in our house, the temperature has uh, can get down to 12 degrees Celsius in the winter at night. So it can get quite chilly. Uh, Jed's just playing on the floor here, so sorry about the background noise. Um, so where do we start with this? This video is going to come in two parts. The first part is going to be for swaddled babies. And the second video is going to be dressing for winter for babies who are no longer in a swaddle so let's just get started with part one now if you ask this question to 10 different people you will get 10 different answers so this is just what we did and what has worked for us best so you would have all heard of SIDS and two of the risk factors for SIDS are um, babies overheating and also babies um, rolling when they're swaddled and also babies being suffocated by blankets. So when it comes to sleep and how you dress your babies in winter, it's not something that you can take lightly. A few different approaches that different people will have and one of them would be to just sort of wing it and go, oh, it's cold tonight, we're gonna to put you in this swaddle and this and that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because that's what our parents would have done back in the day and generations before that. Um, but you also do have to keep in mind that I think the incidence of SIDS has decreased over the years and that with um, you know, technology and more information, we have the ability to sort of get it a bit get it right so that's why I think the approach that we used is is a good one as opposed to just simply winging it so with that being said let me get started and tell you how we go about sleep in the winter and I've just gone into the garage to dig out a couple of Jed's baby swaddles from last year um, so I've brought them in here and I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell. Hi Jetty. <laughs> okay, so winter. Let's talk about what you will need. The first thing you're going to need for my approach is a thermometer. So if you have a room thermometer, uh, sorry, did I say thermometer? Yeah, if you have a um, room monitor, it should have a thermometer. Jen's just gonna close this in okay that's fine it watch your hands watch your hands okay um, your monitor should have a thermometer in it so you can tell what the temperature is and that's how you base what you go what you're gonna dress them in if you're probably either wrapping your baby in a cloth swaddle or you're using something like this which is a ready-made swaddle uh, and this one is one of the convertible ones where the arms are buttoned shut so it is a swaddle they sort of sleep like this um, and there's different types of ready-made swaddles on the market the swaddles that we liked and that we bought were ones by uh, ergo pouch was a favorite um, later on we did use the love to dream swaddles where they have their arms up but Jed didn't like these at first because they weren't firm enough to calm his startle reflex so when you buy these swaddles they are tog rated so what that means it's a thermal indication of how warm they are and you can get the light ones so this is a light 0.21 which is for summer and then you can get the warmer ones all the way up to 3.5 tog which is for winter 
when you buy them they'll come with a, a guide like this um, the love to dream one looks slightly different but what it does is it will tell you it will show the temperature and then it'll say okay for that temperature you need to you should dress your baby in for example a long sleeve onesie um, a singlet and a 2.5 tog swaddle so it's easy you just simply go by that and so it's not like okay it's winter they're wearing this same combination of clothes for the whole of winter no you look at the temperature for that day for the day sleep for the night and you go okay what are we wearing tonight so you know it's not as simple as when you go to bed at night and you pull your doona up and you might add a blanket later or throw a blanket off you do have to adjust it according to what the temperature is um so that's your starting point is to buy is to invest in the swaddles that are tog rated so you know what you're working with and the thing is with that as well they're good quality and they're made using breathable fibers like cotton and um it could be bamboo or whatever they're they're sort of designed in a specific way um to be breathable whereas when you buy the cheaper swaddles which you can get from like target or best and less or whatever they might be polyester synthetic and they're not breathable and you don't really know what the thermal property is of those so uh, we just didn't really bother going down that route okay so on that note though these so this card which is for a swaddled baby it would just simply indicate to put them to bed in the swaddle with those layers underneath we actually went about it a slightly different way and this is up to you it does add a bit of a layer of complexity but i'm going to tell you what we did anyway in hospital they showed us to swaddle the baby and then over the top of them let's say they like pretend i'm the baby and i'm swaddled and then over the top you uh what did we do yeah you you just fold the blanket over the top of them and tuck it under the cot as well and so when you think about what the purpose of a swaddle is it's to keep the baby snug because that's the feeling that they're used to in the womb and it's comforting so adding the blanket over the top is like an extra layer of snugness now we through winter used blankets and the reason blankets on top of the swaddle the reason we did this is first of all for that comfort factor but second of all because the temperature at the start of the night might have been for example 20 degrees and then by the late hours in the morning 4 5 a.m it might have been down to 14 degrees and six degrees is a really large window of difference um in good english um so we because overheating is a factor like a sids factor i just felt too anxious to put jed to bed in a thicker swaddle when it might be too hot at the beginning of the night so what we would do is to put him to bed in the swaddle that was suitable for the temperature at the beginning of the night and then we would oh plus including a blanket and then when he would wake up to feed through the night as they do when they're younger we'd look at the temperature and we'd go okay it's gone down a couple of degrees let's add a blanket now the thickness of the blanket so this is the blanket that you'll get given to you if you're born in australia um actually technically i don't think you meant to take them home but we took one home we went out and bought a couple of blankets of th similar thickness also made of cotton so nice and breathable and we kept these on hand next to the cot and if we could see that it had gotten colder through the night we would simply add a blanket a l i don't know how popular this method is i don't know how many people do this i actually i do i don't know specifically how many but being part of a mother's an online mother's group of about 150 people i do recall now casting my mind back that a lot of people did use blankets so 
that's one option that you can use some people will um, put the dress the baby at the start of the night in the temperature that they anticipate it getting down to you need to do your own research into how comfortable you are with that um, that's not something that I can really comment on we'll probably still do the uh, blanket thing for another baby I think um, but yeah those are those are the options for when your baby's uh, swaddled once your baby knows is showing signs of rolling or being able to roll that's when you no longer have their arms in the swaddle you have their arms out and then after that you don't use blankets anymore but i'll cover that in video number two but before i close this video there's just a couple of other things that i wanted to mention to you in terms of winter sleeping and that is cot sheets so obviously um in summer you might have a a regular cotton sheet in winter you want to um, invest in a couple of sets of flannelette sheets or jersey cotton sheets either one is fine so that the surface that they're sleeping in on isn't super chilly okay so i messed up the part in the video where i was talking about heaters so i'm having to insert this clip after the fact so let's talk about heaters now for Jed, we tried to use a heater when it got to the really cold parts of winter and it was getting down to like 12 degrees in the room. But for us personally, we found it more hassle than it's worth. For one thing, the room was too small to have the heater in there. For another thing, our heater didn't have a thermostat where we could clearly set the temperature that we wanted. So we'd find that our oil heater would go up and down through the night and it kind of just made it more confusing with how to dress him for another thing we personally didn't want to sleep with a heater in our room um, and he was still in our room at the time and I guess we didn't want to power heating all through the night if we really didn't have to obviously there's certain parts of the world and even Australia where you're going to need to heat your home through winter or it's just going to be way too hard so that's a choice that you have to make depending on where you live um, I think the ideal for baby sleeping is meant to be something like 18 degrees so if you were to be going down the route of using some kind of heating then I guess you'd set it around 18 degrees and you'd have the fortune of being able to dress them in the same thing every night and know exactly what you needed to put them in but yeah in terms of heaters um we didn't we didn't bother with a heater and well sorry we did bother but we ended up not using one and i doubt we will use them again this winter but never say never like if it gets super super cold and i'm worried that you know his face is gonna freeze off then we might use a heater but yeah i just wanted to insert that clip and now we'll just go back to the original video one thing we did do though when he was a little baby um on those really really cold winter nights is while i was breastfeeding jed in the middle of the night Lindsay would go down and heat up this wheat pack in the microwave and we like just a little bit not not steaming hot but just a little bit and we put it on the bed in the bed put the blankets over while i was feeding jed and then take it out before we put him back in just to take the edge of coldness off the bed <coughs> hi sweetie one more thing i just wanted to add was with regards to socks um and hats in winter I have read that it's not a good thing to put a hat on your baby in the winter in the night time because the, at the beginning when they're younger they don't have the ability to sweat this is when they're really little so they need their head to be uh, free of hats to um, regulate their heat so I wouldn't be putting a hat on their head unless you have your own specific instructions or other information that tells you that you can um, feet as well is something that we're wary about there are some nights when it's sort of 
I don't like to have his feet covered because it might be a little bit warm and I just want him to be able to, you know, regulate his hip feet properly and I don't know about you but sometimes if I go to bed with socks on and I get really hot I just need to take my socks on and it helps with that temperature regulation however there are also nights when my feet get really cold and I can't sleep so on those nights I would definitely put Jed in a pair of socks for bed and one last thing that I want to tell you about that's not strictly related to winter sleeping, but that is really helpful. If you have a boy, they tend, they can be more prone to leaking in their nappies at night. This is a baby behinds wool nappy cover, and you just put it over the top of their disposable nappy at night time. And it, um, if they leak, it absorbs and neutralizes because wool is magic it neutralizes any odors and they won't leak which is really great in winter when it's cold the last thing you want to be doing is stripping down your baby changing sheets making them cold and upset in the middle of the night and we did that for a while we were coping with a leaking baby for a while before we came across this quite late in the piece so i would really recommend a wool nappy cover I think that might actually cover everything for for newborn sorry newborn slash swaddled babies so I will end this video here and then if you would like to find out how we um, how we dressed our baby for winter out of the swaddle you can come back for part two thanks for watching bye